Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm working on this. I'm trying to get a steampunk kind of thing going on, and uh, somebody was requesting some lessons on drawing cars, so I'm just uh, working on this here, steampunk kind of thing with a car. Um, the lesson is going to be on drawing uh, perspective, actually like mechanical things in general. And so uh, I want to make it interesting. So I don't want to have just to draw like a car. There's so many different types of cars out there. And well, you know, I like steampunk kind of. Actually, I know nothing about steampunk to be perfectly honest. I, I enjoy it. I like it when I see steampunk art. Now I was trying to figure out where it came from. And I do understand the concept. It's basically, if you don't know already, steampunk is a style of um, a style of art, or it's a genre sort of art that can also be maybe put into uh, movies or, or something like this. Uh, I can't think, when I try to think of like steampunk movie, the only thing that comes to mind is an anime, which I believe might be a Japanese done anime, that is, uh, it was called Metropolis, I think, and they got kind of a, a steampunk thing going on there. There's probably a whole bunch of animes that do it. It's a very artsy thing. But the idea with uh, steampunk is that you're using kind of a 19th century, so like, you know, 1800s to uh, 1900 which I don't know why they call that 19th century, but okay, um, 1800s kind of technology <clears throat> and uh, trying to make fu futuristic things. So something you would see a lot in steampunk might be something like the hot air balloon, right, which would come down a bit like this, and then you'd have some wires, and there'd be a basket here. But maybe uh, to make it steampunk now, because that's basically just 19th century technology to make it steampunk it would do something like add uh, a jet engine to it perhaps but or, or add propellers and have it doing something that's a bit more futuristic so you're using past ancient technology but trying to make it futuristic so it's almost as if to say that when you're trying to design a steampunk design what you're doing is you're going back to uh, the imagination of somebody who is living in the 1800s and trying to produce something that they would have thought is the future. But then, even with that, to polish it off, make it really steampunk, what you're going to do is uh, you're going to go and, and make it like really shiny and polished. Most of the time, that's what I've, I mean, based on what I've seen. I have never seen like really dirty kind of uh, steampunk. What I mean by dirty would be kind of like, hmm, how do I explain that? Not like, uh, the word I think would be gritty. It wouldn't be like gritty, kind of like Batman dirty sort of thing. And they have a lot of brass. So whereas in the modern era, we'd see a lot more steel. Um, back then, you'd see a lot more brass. Motor vehicles would have these big headlight kind of things with a, a lot of brass or chrome. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, yeah, maybe it's not even brass. It's chrome. So it should be a bit more yellow. A lot of chrome. I'm just adding some color in here. And, well, as you can see here, I just tried to make everything as it should be. of wheels that have, like, spokes on them, almost like bicycle spokes, because that's how the cars used to be. And then goggles would be a big thing. So if we go on Wikipedia and look up Steampunk, they have a, a few pictures there that kind of help to bring it to idea. Uh, bring it to, bring the idea to light, I mean... They have this one guy who's <clears throat> missing an arm, excuse me, and he's uh, he has his bionic arm, but instead of being something that would be modern, it's all like gears and stuff. So if you can imagine having like, you know, uh, right here I put all these gears around here. If you can imagine having gears uh, that, you know, winding, bending, it kind of exaggerated too, always exaggerated, like too many gears, more gears than something would ever actually need. It's like almost like adding gears for the sake of gears. Also seems to be a steampunk, steampunk kind of theme. <clears throat> so I did this as a sketch, and there's nothing, I mean, it's fun, I like it. There's nothing really, 
you know, fascinating about it. But, uh, and there's a cat on the top. But I was going to say, the whole point is to, to just get this sketch out so that I can have some kind of something to go into the class with, some kind of idea. So first you have to do a sketch. This, this will be like Chrome Fender. Now a Fender, it's kind of a weird name. It's a relatively modern word. You might even say Fender because they didn't, cavemen didn't have Fenders, right? But have fenders now. And I was thinking about a Fender when I was drawing it, where it originates from, or why, why do you even have a Fender? Because you notice in some of the older cars, they have these Fenders too. And in an older car, you might say, or not necessarily older, but this this particular fender right here, you might say, why did they add that? Is that just some kind of fancy thing to make it look cool? Well, there's actually two reasons for it. One thing is that, and I learned this from riding a bicycle when I was a kid. One thing is that when wheels are spinning, they kick things up. And the things that they kick up can be rocks, debris. If there's a nail on the ground, it'll kick it up because the tire is spinning, right? It's always spinning in that direction. And uh, so, you know, the earth is going back this way. Wheels are spinning forward, of course. As a result, they're, they're kicking things back. And if you're in the front up here in this area, it's going to kick it back towards you. And you don't want that stuff flying in your face or damaging your car. And if it's raining, watch out, because every time you go through a puddle in here, it's going to splash everything up in this direction. And that's uh, problematic. So these fenders, what they do is they block a lot of that de debris off. I had a bike, and I would ride it everywhere religiously, and I'd ride it to school, regardless of rain or shine or whatever. <coughs> and when it was raining, I would have a streak up my back of water and say how did I get water on my back when I was riding the bike especially at this particular streak and it was because the wheel was kicking it back up it, it kicks it up so fast and so hard that it would kick it back back towards me and that was my hind wheel you would say you you know you would think the wheel behind you well you know it's already behind you so you wouldn't have to worry about it <clears throat> but it was actually the hind wheel that was kicking all this debris up on me so I bought a little thing, kind of like a fender, and you fasten it to the seat, and it sticks back over the wheel and blocks all that stuff from coming. Or at least that's how I remember it. I'm not sure if I ever bought that thing. I know that that thing existed. I kind of remember having problems I wanted to put on my bike and it wouldn't fit. I think eventually I got it on there somehow. I can't remember. <clears throat> not really important. The darker shade here. I just want to fill in this back area. As you can see, I'm just doing this with no uh, kind of level of intelligence or anything. I'm just scribbling around the same way you would in a coloring book because it's not really important. Killing time, basically. Today I had... Well, I wanted to take a break. I couldn't figure out what I want to do. And I have all these things sitting sitting on my desktop kinda so to speak not really but there's all these things that are like I have a list of things that I have to do and I'm looking at all of them and sometimes you get in this mode of like which thing do I want to do first and the fact of the matter is I don't want to do any of them so I kind of don't do them and uh, I know this starts to sound like procrastination or laziness or something, but the funny thing is none of that's necessarily true because I want to do something. As you can see now, I'm doing something, but I don't want to do any of those things. I guess that's also a type of pr procrastination, but there's also justifications and reasons behind it because I'm not a lazy person, even down to the point of you know doing work for other people. I don't dislike that. The problem comes is when... Uh, the people who I'm working for sometimes are not even responsive. That does happen. And it causes me to neglect the work. So people are busy, in other words, and I'm, as a result of them being too busy, I am not really occupying myself at the time. 
at the moment. But there are things to do, and this was one of them. This has to be done. This is actually working towards uh, something that's productive, and that is my next class, which is going to be on uh, making uh, drawing machines. You could even say, I guess, making machines in a manner of speaking, because everything starts with a drawing. Um, now, as to why there's a cat up here, <coughs> and I don't know what color the cat should be, the lesson that I'm going to be working on next is going to have a preliminary lesson to it. That's the how to draw a cat, or it's called Draw a Kitten. And if you haven't seen that yet, it is 100% free, and I'll provide a link for you somewhere. And that lesson it'd be interesting here if this this little uh, head thing, what do you call it, matches the color of the cat. Maybe something else matches the color of the cat too, like the spokes or something. I don't know. I'll figure it out later. But yeah, the lesson is a, a preliminary lesson. Sorry, I just lost my train of thought there. And in that lesson, you're going to learn how to... Oh no, in the cat lesson, I mean... I went over uh, basic drawing techniques and people liked it a lot. It was well received, this course, so <clears throat> I think I should continue with that, keep that as a preliminary lesson, and then move on, build upon it with some of this stuff, <clears throat> which is basically how to draw mechanics. So, a lot of people, I was asking them, you know, what they'd like to draw next, and a couple people were getting into that, well, I mean, a few people who did respond, I should say, to be fair, they were saying they wanted to draw more mechanical kind of things. And so one of them specifically said they want to draw a car. Well, uh, I, I don't really do well at drawing cars, and I, I'm not like a big fan of cars. But as you can see here, I'm doing one, and it's coming out not too bad. This is the steampunk, steampunk kind of car. You need a lot of leather and chrome kind of color here and so <clears throat> but what I can do or what would make it interesting for me maybe I should say is just to turn it into an overall mechanical or technical drawing lesson that makes it much more worthwhile for me <clears throat> and there will happen to be a car in there so if you can learn how to draw a car like this and I mean this is just a simple 2d side view kind of sketch but what I what I intend to do is, yeah, I had to change this layer real quick. What I intend to do is teach it in a way so that it'll be, the car won't be on a side view like this. This is only for sketching purposes. But if I can get it, like the car kind of coming towards us, or give us some perspective, that way I'll be able to teach 2D perspective or uh, two point perspective or one point, I'm not sure. Probably for the car to get a good view of it should be some kind of two point and then <clears throat> with that two point perspective in mind they should be able to go ahead and draw whatever they want afterwards and they asked for a car so this technically is a car I'm not trying to be weird or anything but you know a car is a car one thing that's great with uh, shading I always notice is notice here I'm putting some random spots around here and there where the shading is just like this and that because sometimes that's actually how it is there's just things there could be something in front of this car that you can't see right now it's just like mm, let's choose a random spot like here it's just blocking the light here maybe over here maybe over there there's something in the distance make it sort of like a straight line so you get the feeling there's some object somewhere blocking something and you just make stuff up like that obviously that's not if you're in the beginning stages, it's not something you should jump into. If you're taking a class on drawing and the teacher just wants to see a simple basic light and shade uh, from your imagination or, or even from reality, stuff like that might be a bit too advanced or complicated. Uh, teachers get like that too, which is kind of sad, particularly with teachers. You'd hope, you always hope that they'll be smart enough to pick things up, but they just got to give you a grade and the only way that they can know whether or not you're, they're giving you the right grade is based on whether or not you followed their instructions. So if you try and do something that's more advanced than what they required, doesn't mean they won't appreciate it, 
but they might criticize you for it and that in turn will lead to a bad grade of course so I never liked school you just gotta live through it I think this is supposed to come down here a bit not a hundred percent sure that pretty much pretty much does it for that these propellers this is uh, very poorly drawn I'm just trying to bring this to a phase where it's kind of presentable and this is not let's get back into the black do this I have this I like how it is right now it's on a very high uh, it's a very large sized um, brush yeah very large sized brush and because of that but I have it on uh, the sensitivity on pretty pretty high as well so I can make a thick line and then come to a little tip it's very painterly this is not so good I just want these to look like propellers spinning I guess what they normally do you follow the cartoon routine something like this Eh, oh well, it'll work. Will that pass the grade? I guess so. I'll just try and thicken up these here. Yep. Some unnecessary lines. Very sketchy. <coughs> but yeah, that's basically what this was for. It's just supposed to be a sketch. And I need a quick video to put up, so here it is. If you have any ideas or requests, I am definitely neglecting this channel and I'm aware of that there's not much going on here at the moment that's because basically there's not much going on so I don't mean to let it die but uh, I have to take some steps to pick it up nowadays if you want to have a channel that has people watching it and I mean even if I were to have double or triple the amount of people right now it's not like I'd be making any money at it but I just wanted to for it to get somewhere that uh, it's you know uh, give give me an excuse to justify taking time out of the day because otherwise what you get is kind of uh, maybe someone could be given the impression that there's this is just some kind of hobby and it is I like hobby but for me to justify putting so much time into it which as I have already then there has to be you know some product that comes back out of it right so in this case that product would be viewers subscribers uh, comments any kind of anything to uh, to keep it moving and it hasn't been bad I've had some comments and to those of you who are listening you know who you are thank you very much for those comments they are invaluable so but I have to uh, I have to pick up the pace and a lot of it's my fault it's not like I'm complaining to the wind here I have to get uh, I have to do some promotion you don't just plant a seed and then come back next year and and wait for you know look look for the tree and say where's the tree <coughs> you see you have to stay there and uh, give it some water make sure that it's still alive and all that this brush might be a bit too big it'll probably do the trick now this is a collage a big mess right here of <laughs> total mess of what would you call this even it's just uh, engineering nightmare just all these all these random things random lines should be what do you call these they're like support beams mechanical structure here it just has too much randomness to it it all has uh, there's reasoning for it why I put everything where it is but it's just too chaotic this one here should make a straight line I think that one does that one does yeah I'm just trying to justify it what was happening here is this front cage I was hoping to look sort of like a, a Star Wars Millennium Falcon kind of thing 
because in the 1900s or well I guess we would say yeah it would be early 1900s they had this kind of design where if you wanted all these to be glass and have sort of a curvature to it they would just design um, almost like a hexagonal kind of thing whereas now they can just make curved glass they didn't used to actually have that you can make a curve like structure with metal or something and then <clears throat> just make straight panes for each each little section <clears throat> so it'd be sort of hexagonal instead of perfect sphere and just make some cartoony lines back here maybe like I was saying earlier some stuff is kicking up some debris kicking up in the back and a lot of this stuff here if you appreciate this sketch at all is actually just being kind of technical what I'm doing is thinking you know it's a car I start I literally started off with just two wheels and then I started uh, I even had a sketch before this one where I thought you know maybe the wheels were too close to to each other and I wanted to have more space to be able to draw different things so I made them further apart and then I decided upon this the front part being a bit more um, I don't know what you call it just having that big front wheel thing like a race car and coming into a sleek design I don't have all the words for for everything but I don't know there's a vision there in my head of what I wanted I'll just say the front is sort of like a race car thing and I wanted the back to have a bigger more powerful kind of wheel although it still ended up being kind of delicate so it's nothing's really exaggerated <clears throat> But that's it. Let me, yeah, right about there. I guess it's good enough of a sketch. That's all it's supposed to be. I could definitely play with color a lot more and make random things happen. But this is good enough for now. I wonder if I should play with these lines. Nah, a little bit of that. Here's a shade layer. Needs a little bit more shade. overall it's not too bad okay so we'll be wrapping this up right about here hope you enjoyed that if you have any questions let me know or requests um, I'm going to be busy with these things the technical drawings and then um, what's the other thing oh yeah go to uh, if you want to go to Udemy and just look my name up it's hard sometimes to put the link in the comments because nobody looks at that but just to make sure it's uh, udemy.com I can raise the font on that Oop. how do we get in here udemy udemy.com has nothing to do with this drawing well aside that you know the class I'm making is for that go to udemy.com and search for my name or search for uh, draw a kitchen and that is a 100% free course which I made so you don't have to worry about paying for it so there's no reason really to not sign up and then after you sign up there I don't know what they do they'll, they'll probably send you some promotional materials and saying that you can get all these classes for ten dollars off and maybe you do want those classes that's fine but just play with the settings if you don't and yeah I, I honestly just don't know what they do with it so <clears throat> but I have a couple courses in there and you take the kit and one first which is free then you can decide whether or not you like it the YouTube videos are going to be going in the path of not of the dinosaur but basically like this where I'm just coming in doing some random sketches and stuff and then uh, saving the big stuff for that I actually have an idea for another one I want to do today yeah I'm gonna do that soon but these yeah these these YouTube videos will probably get a bit more sketchy unless people decide to uh, you know pick up and come in and join of like 21 subscribers now which is not to uh, you know it's not to sneeze at it's a great thing and I worked hard for that uh, but we got to uh, got to pick it up because it's been a couple years now with this and nobody's uh, nobody's really paying too much attention to it so I'll always make the videos but they got to be um, 
I'm not going to put too much energy into it if I'm not getting much energy back out of it. So go to Udemy. That helps too. Or leave a comment. And we'll see you later.